Hello adventurers! Welcome to Dragon's Dogma 2 and today we'll show you cool build for warfare. But first of all, you need to unlock this vacation and it's pretty late game. So you wanna unlock warfare. It's pretty late game, vacation and to unlock warfare, first of all you need to get to Volcanic Island Camp. And you will eventually get to this place when you continue and play in your main storyline. But also you can unlock it almost from the start of the game. Make sure to watch the description and pinned comment and also video at the end of this video because I will post very soon nice road how to get over here really fast and easy. So first step to unlock warfare is to get to this volcanic camp actually and then go over here into Gazer Hamlet. In Gazer Hamlet there will be a dude on the ground. We need to talk with him and we need to accept his quest. And in reality we need three lookers. So where to find them? One of the lookers you can find on the way when you're going into this town. Near the campsite there will be a wine walker's home. Right inside of it there will be liquor. Also that's the place where you can unlock Magic Archer Vacation. So make sure to check Magic Archer video. But that's only one liquor. we need two more where we can get them. And actually we can get them in Bagbatakl. That's our previous location before we actually can get into the Volcanic Island camp. So I recommend getting liquors before you're going on your journey. And the exact place is this shop over here in Hicks Tavern Stand. And if you're a human to buy all items from him, you need this Beastern Mask. Mask is on, let's go to Hicks. We need to pick up the sex and put them into this place. Then we will be met by this bro. Welcome, welcome. In the and now we can buy new liquors. There's exactly three liquors over here. And just make sure you get at least 10k if you already got at least one liquor from, from the house of this little dwarf, I mean. We will be attacked, so just run away. <laughs> That's the best idea if you're not super powerful right now. And just make your way back to Volcanic Island. I got Port Crystal over there. I placed it, so just by tossing one stone into the air, we are back to Volcanic Island. And now only thing left is to give this guy all his liquors. Delivering all liquors, he will tell you a nice story and unlock Warfare Vacation. And also will give you Warfare Vacation special scroll. So let's take a look at our skills. And if we take a look at core skills, we will see that uh, Warfare got access to all of them. And you know why? Because Warfare can use any weapon he like. So, unlike other vacations, they got the mastery skill. Warfare got mastery skill too, but it's not using any weapon, it's just changing your weapon. So, you can be archer, then you can change to mage, then you can change to fighter, and so on with any weapon you like. And while you can't use mastery skills from other vacations, you can combine at least three skills from different vacations and use all of them. So that's why today I will show you my combinations that I'm using right now, and it's a lot of fun. And when you pick in your equipment, there will be a button to change order, and my order is two-handed stuff from Sorcerer, then we get magic bow from Magic Archer, and then we get daggers from Rogue. <laughs> so how all of this will work together. To understand, we need to go to my skills and I will explain the combination. That's basically about what you need to think when you're making any warfare build. First of all, we get high seism from our Sorcerer. This skill summons a lot of rocks and uh, just uh, throw away your enemies to the like air, then to the ground, and then they falling, doing nothing, they are prone. And that's where comes our magic archer. We're starting with Frost Hunter Bolt. We're basically charging our bow with cold attack. And then after enemies on the ground, we're slowing them even more with our cold attack and possibly freezing them. When they are frozen, they are super easy target and they basically unleash our normal magic archer attack, which is one of the most powerful attacks, if I'm not mistaken, in this game. It's like insanely powerful and scaling is insane too. So why do we need a rogue with so much power already? 
And that's because Magic Archer got no mobility and can't reliably escape from his targets. So if he is in danger, he is very vulnerable. That's where comes a row with cutting wind skill that you can use not only to inflict damage to your enemies, but just to run away from them. And this combination makes insanely mobile Sorcerer and Magic Archer. So with Rogue, we're basically disabling the most vulnerable spot, the biggest flaw. Sorcerers and Magic Archers is just so squishy and slow movable, but with uh, Cutting Point and with Rogue, we will be super fast and can reposition ourselves in combat really quickly. I will show you just in a second, but first of all, let's talk about Augments. So for Augments from Warfare, we got Zeal, you can definitely research this Augment, it's pretty nice, it reduces stamina consumed when performing weapon skills, so it's useful for like almost any class. And also we got Dynamism over here, it's reducing amount by which weight affects your movement speed. It's probably useful if you have a lot of weapons, but you don't need more than three anyway, so why bothering to even take it? And that's my full build. So we get Zeal from Warfare to consume less stamina. Then we get Endurance to increase our maximum stamina. And then we get Exaltation from Mage. So Endurance from Archer, Exaltation from Mage to increase stamina recovery speed. So pretty nice and fine combination. While we are mobile, we still don't want to be targeted by enemies a lot. That's why we get Subtlety from Rogue to decrease likelihood of being targeted by foes, basically. Then we got Sorcerer Augment Sagacity, augments our magic, so we're doing more damage, because we're doing magic damage as Magic Archer and as Sorcerer. And I got Asperity, increasing likelihood of inflicting debilitations with our attacks. Basically, with our Cold Bow, we are more likely to freeze enemies. So let's get out of the time and out of the town, and I will show you this warfare in action and how to actually do our combinations. So we're starting as sorcerer, and normally we're just running around, roaming around with this awesome flying ability. I like to be a sorcerer when I exploring and basically doing stuff like this. It's pretty cool, and we can do, go to different places. And as sorcerer, we can do magic balls, which we will never do. Basically, we don't need to attack a sorcerer. As sorcerer, we're going to use our skill. So, when you press and hold weapon skill button, you will be able to use rearmament and high season. Then we change to bow. We will be use frost hunter bolt here, and then to daggers with cutting wind. So. When you switch to daggers, also you can use Swift Step as a rogue, so it's using no stamina and you can just dash away a little bit, just in case you don't have any stamina left. You can use it instead of cutting grind, but cutting grind is a lot more useful because you can use it in quick succession to really run away from fight. But coolest part, if you lose all your stamina while doing it, so you're switching back to our friend Sosra. And this sorcerer you can use Triangel to just replenish your stamina outside of the fight and rinse and repeat, go back. So as sorcerer you need to press and hold our ability button. You can press and hold aim button. No, you can't actually. And just one tap our high season ability. This will start casting our skill. But while doing so, you can basically uh, unclick all buttons and mage will cast automatically. I mean, sorcerer also you can move, but casting will be slower. And you can cancel this casting by pressing Alt L2 or Alt LT on Xbox. But you can press and hold R1 or R RB basically. And this will make it spell to cast insanely quickly like this, but it will take some stamina. Now when it's casted, you will do this beautiful animation and destroy ground beneath your enemies. They will fly. And at this time, when they're flying, you want to press rearmament, change to magic archer and start charging your magic bow. And better to do it with your targeted ability. So as magic archer, if you don't know how he works, basically, you can target enemies inside this circle and it will automatically target every enemy and let me just find some enemies so it will just uh, stack some symbols every symbol is one arrow 
So if you just start in your cast, it will be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then you can unleash seven arrows at this poor target. But you can press triangle to set up big circle or small circle, use big against uh, big packs of enemies to target multiple enemies at once, and use small circle to target solo targets. But anyway, you want uh, to cast Frost Hunter Bolt from this state, target enemies and unleash your frost arrows. After you're doing so, you just start attacking normally. And that's basically your strategy as Magic Archer. And you can uh, just switch from Frost Hunter Bolt, do this cold attack, then you will do one more cold attack, because uh, that's kind of passive from Magic Archer, and then do Frost Hunter Bolt again. And then when enemies come close, just in case, you're switching back to your Rogue, and start dashing away, then start using skill away. After you used skill away, switch back to Mage, recharge your stamina, and rinse and repeat, start casting the Seism, and destroy ground beneath your enemies. So that's combination. I destroyed most powerful enemies in this area while I was uh, shooting my magic archer. But I guess most important stuff is idea. And here is our enemies. So let's cast this stuff and unleash the power while Aaron is high ground. We're switching back to this bow. Make sure to cast it only once. And everyone is destroyed, but we need to cast Frost Hunter Bolt anyway on enemies, and we will be insanely high damaging class, but also at the same time we got a nice range of disables. Disabling enemies is also insanely, insanely useful stuff. And just one frost arrow can destroy enemy plants easily. So that's my cool strategic warfare mix of Magic Usher and Wizard. I mean Sorcerer, of course. I hope you enjoyed it and you will have blast playing it in Dragon's Dogma 2. Make sure to subscribe and see other builds on the screen right now. And see you in the next videos.